morning. Good morning. How's everybody this chilly day? Oh, good. That's great. I love that song, Something Wonderful is Happening Here in the Day. Isn't it? Is something wonderful happening here today? Yeah. Well, let's wait and see. So, quiz. What were you doing 44 years ago today? Come on. Shoveling snow. <laughs> well, you may not know what you were doing, but I certainly know what I was doing at this exact time. Because that was the first day I walked into a spiritual center 44 years ago today. So we can update the thing as I'm now into my 45th year. So I've got 44 years into it. Which is really interesting because, uh, especially with the topic faith, because when I first walked through the door, uh, I, I didn't know anything about faith. In fact, I was really destitute. And I just opened up to the experience to see where it would take me. Guess where it took me? Right here. And I'm pretty happy about where it took me. And I like uh, the affirmation for the month here is, I stand firm in unwavering faith. Does that sound like a good affirmation? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, I got something I add to it. So prove it <laughs> <laughs> to yourself. You see, it's easy to say that you have faith. Easy. That's not the problem. The problem is demonstrating it. And by demonstrating it is, I mean, how do you approach difficult situations? Like really drastic ones are a lot easier to have faith because you've got no other choice. Those are the ones where I can have lots of faith. But we're talking on about day-to-day -day activities and just living a life of faith and about how we could go about doing that. So I want to explore a few ideas today but before we get started, let's see what the experts have to talk to us about on faith. So I'm going to start out with Jesus, because he talked about faith. And how important was it? Well, if we look at this metaphysically like we do in this movement, we realize that the 12 disciples represent the 12 faculties of the individual. And Jesus called his first disciple Peter. Peter is Petros in Greek which is rock or solid. And in Matthew he said, upon, I, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, first thing we've got to be real clear, what was he talking about there? Because he didn't, he didn't build any churches. That wasn't what he did. What he was talking about is the church was the individual. He was referring to us as the individual, and the first quality that we need to work at developing on the spiritual path is faith. So Peter is rock solid, and Peter represents faith. Because uh, if you've got a foundation built strong on faith, it don't matter. The winds blow, the rains come, and it doesn't wash it away. The house stands strong. So that's the first one that we got to work with. Faith is the first quality to develop. Then he goes on and he's talking, you know that seminar where he did where the caterers screwed up and they didn't get enough food so he had to get some, you know, he only had a few fish and bread he made a whole bunch for everybody. He didn't want his disciples to stick around. So he said, ah, go back to the boat and wait for me. So he got everybody fed, then he went up to the mountain to pray, then he come back, there's no boat. Well, how am I going to get there? Well, here, Jesus, he just walked across the water, right? So he's walking across the water, and all the disciples see him coming, and they freak out because they never see nothing like this. Oh, oh, what's this? And he says to them, fear not, it's me. And then Peter, faith. Of course, he's the one that steps up and says, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come out into the water. And Jesus said, come on. And Peter came down out of the ship, and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But then the wind picked up, and the water got going, and the waves got going. And then all of a sudden, guess what? Peter freaked out and got afraid. Did you hear that? Fear crept in. And so he began to sink. And he goes, Lord, save me. And Jesus reaches out his hand and says to him, 
Come on now, O ye of little faith. You see? And whenever one has any kind of fear, that is not a place of faith. We have to learn to move from fear to faith. So we can compartmentalize our fear all we want, pick it up later. But we gotta move into that place of being open and receptive and not giving over to negative emotion. So the next thing here was a trial. This is really important here because Jesus, when he was just going through the trial, uh, he, he, he was going through the rough time, and then he went up to Gethsemane to pray, and he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John. And James and John represent the head and the heart. So whenever you're doing your work, and Jesus took the three of them quite often when he went up to the mountain to pray, he took, you got to have your head and your heart, but the foundation is your faith. So if you're going to accomplish anything and do the impossible, which everybody can tell you is impossible, like people told me was impossible, don't listen to them. Because if you listen to them, it's impossible. you got to come back into yourself, get your head and heart aligned, and build it on that foundation of faith, and you can literally move mountains. But what happened to Jesus when he went up there, and this is very important, because when you're in trial and tribulation, it's really hard to be in that place. And even Jesus, when he went up there with the three, his three disciples fell asleep. Not once, not twice, but three times. And the significance of that is, hey, during tough times, even Jesus had a little hard time there dealing with it. So, you know, don't get down on yourself. It's right there. He said that. His disciples fell asleep. And that's what it means. He just lost connection with his head, heart, and his faith. Okay? So, next time you're getting down on yourself, realize that, hey, even Jesus had a bad day every now and again. Now, of course, other people won't tell you that, but that's the way we read it. So that's the way it was for him. Now then you go into our modern area. One of my favorites is Dr. Ernest Holmes, who wrote The Science of Mind. And what he says is my favorite, one of my favorites on faith. He says, faith is the power of prayer. It's a mental attitude against which there is no longer any contradiction in the mind that entertains it. Faith is a mental attitude which is so convinced of its own idea, which so completely accepted that any contradiction is unthinkable and impossible. Before such a mental attitude can be created, there must be nothing left in the subjective state of our thought that contradicts our objective affirmation. affirmation. So that means being willing to release all the negativity that one has. You can say that could take a long time. Well, you know, I've just been working on it 44 years, and just this last little well over the last couple of months, I took the tech course. I'm always taking courses. I decided that I would take the basics of the science of mind again because I hadn't done it in 40 years. And I'd done it, and one of the things that I found out was I had some forgiveness to do that I really didn't want to. I wanted, I've been hanging on to that for years since 2001. Anybody been hanging on to anything that long? <laughs> and I know I was hanging on to it, but I was going to get them. And it finally come to get me this last fall that I still needed to do a little bit of forgiveness and release. We must purify the channel because the instant that we do that, something wonderful comes into our experience and I got something wonderful, but that's going to be another day I'll have to share because it's still in the developmental stage. Something wonderful happens when you do that. So we've got to get rid of all that negativity. And so what I want to do today is I want to do a little touch up on experiencing faith in day to day living and how we can tune it up so that we're there with everything that we do the best that we can. And so I come across something a, a little bit different uh, that come to me that I had never really talked about in terms of faith before. 
But what I'm going to talk about here is really, really important. It really nailed me. It's the difference between expectancy and attachment to outcome. Expectancies and attachment. So when we're doing our spiritual work, we always must expect positive results. We always must expect that which we're working on to come into form. And if not that, it's going to be better if we do it the right way because spirit never gives us less. Okay? So expectancy is something that's rich. Attachment is something that takes us right out of faith because we say that this is how it's got to be. And if it doesn't work the way we think it'll be, then we're upset. Anybody have it work out, but not the way you wanted it to be, and you're upset, even though the way it worked out was okay? Even though the way it worked out might have been better than what you thought? Yeah, well, you see, that's because you didn't have any faith in it. Because when you're attached to an outcome, that's not faith. When you do your spiritual work, and do it with expectancy and allow the universe to bring you what it is you need to do in order to adjust yourself to experience that or better. And it's always better. One of my favorite stories of being attached to going to Hawaii. And I've told you this before, but it's a really good one. I go when I have the money. I thought you had to have money to go to Hawaii. What a limitation. There's no faith. What faith is there in thinking you have to have money to go on a holiday in Hawaii? I had a realization maybe I could win a trip. Maybe somebody would take me. Let's get rid of that money. I'm going to Hawaii. Six months later, I got a call to go over to do some work in Hawaii. Twice I went over to the Big Island and to Oahu to work. Two times I went over, it didn't cost me a dime. Two times I went and I got paid to go. Who would have thought? That's why you gotta get rid of the attachments. You don't need money to go to Hawaii. You just need the desire. You need the willingness to have faith and know what's gonna happen and go about acting it like it is. Now, you're a little bit crazy, but you know, I've been told that before. <laughs> and where this really comes into play is with the old giving and receiving. How many are good givers here? Anybody good givers? <laughs> okay, a few. Now, if you ever have you ever given somebody something and they go, oh, what am I gonna do with this piece of junk? <laughs> And you just felt blessed to be able to give it to them when they said that? <laughs> right? You see where I'm going with this, okay? Have you ever given somebody to something and they gave it to somebody else? Or they never said thank you? How about that one? They didn't even say thank you. How could they do that? Well, that's because I didn't give it in faith. I'm out of faith. I gave it, it with an attachment to outcome. So I'm not really giving, I'm just saying I'm giving. And the same thing happens with receiving. It's all a flow, it's all circulation and flow. And it's all about control. We don't have to control, I'm listening to this real close. We don't have to control the universe. It works fine without us controlling. So. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm still in Santa season because we had one of the most remarkable Santa seasons ever. And I had a half a dozen incidences where I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this kid. And I got the mom or dad there and I'm, I'm just, and they're just in what the kid's doing. And I go, do you know I get paid for this? <laughs> I couldn't believe it how many times I said that. I get paid to do this. You cannot buy what we get. We can, you can. But do you think when I walked through the doors 44 years ago 
that you would be telling me that I would be getting that being Santa? I would have had words with for you. They wouldn't have been kind at that time. And I'd want to know what kind of drugs you're on because I probably want to do something. <laughs> right? So let's go back into talk. I worked with the Grinch this year, too, a couple of different venues. It's, it's fun working with the Grinch. We had a good time. Grinch was okay. Kids were scared of him. Santa got to be the hero again. <laughs> We chased him out of the room. Oh, I really like that too, by the way. <laughs> you gotta try it sometime. You just, you just need a Grinch. Anyhow, the Grinches of faith, in addition to this, always, always, no doubt, when you've got these in your mind, if you're working with these, you're out of touch with faith. The Grinches of faith are worry, doubt, Fear, negativity, and skepticism. Does that cover it? So if we've got that in our mind when we're working towards anything, even trying to make some sense out of a kid that we got or a person in our life right to a major project, anytime we've got that, we don't have a bit of faith in our project. It just steals it. So the idea is to practice eliminating that from our consciousness. And to remember, one of my favorite things here is, you can't have a breakthrough until you have a breakdown. Well, I like to do it the easy way. Well, there's no such thing as the easy way, because the old, has to break down and dissolve and be gone in order to embrace the new and have the breakthrough. And you can't bring a whole lot of new stuff into your life until you what? Let go of some of the old. So you have to have a breakdown of the old before you can have a breakthrough. And so when we're going through that process, it's like a storm. And we must realize, and I like this quote, not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some come to clear your path. Okay. Just a label. And it's all about how we look at things and how we deal with things. The last idea here I want to leave you with is the subtle difference between having the faith in God <clears throat> versus the faith of God. How many people, or how many times you say, oh, I've got a faith in God? Anybody? And that's a good starting point. And that's all it is, but there is one step beside, besides having a faith in the power and the presence. It's being like Jesus. Having the faith of God. There was, he didn't, Jesus didn't have faith in anything. He had the faith of God. And he behaved like it. He acted like it. And he didn't do his work and say, gee, I hope that happens or works. Gee, it was a good thing. I, did. I wish it works out fine. I hope everything's going to be okay. Did he ever say that? No. None of them ever say that. You just have it, declare it, and step into your experience. Uh, is it going to be there all the time? Heavens, no. It's like walking on a... Uh, a log going across a stream. You've got to be real careful. Sometimes it gets a little testy. And so we're in and out of faith. And I remember uh, one of the most powerful experiences I had, and I almost had my three bad years, and I don't talk but much about the last one. It was 1997. Because here, here I am, I'm a professional accountant, a CPA, done all that good stuff. Ching, ching. I'm a science of my minister, know all the rules and regulations. Cha -ching. I'm doing everything right, starting a new work. Everybody doing that? Cha -ching, cha -ching. All of a sudden, there I am, burnt out. I went through a serious burnout where I had panic and anxiety attacks for several months. The, the fortunate place, the only way, where I, place I could go to get therapy was in the mountains. It just wasn't there in the mountains. So maybe that's why my log book has uh, just under 800 kilometers hiking that summer and 75 days in the mountains, most of them by myself. 
That's probably why it is like that. But I remember being in that position. I lost my career. I had to step out of the ministry and become incompetent. I couldn't work. I lost my house. I lost my car. I had nothing and I had to rent a room for the first time in my life. I'm 49 years old, 48 years old, and I'm renting a room. Can you imagine that? And when I know all of this, I got 16 years experience. How could that happen? Well, you never ask a question, how could this happen to me? Who cares? The question you ask is, how do I resolve this and move forward? And then when you do that, you will receive the knowledge about why this happened to me, what I needed to learn, and all that blah blah stuff. But if you want to look at finding a problem, we can deal with that. I got lots of good help in finding problems if you want to work on it. And I remember getting in touch with faith, being on the top of Fairview Mountain at Lake Louise, and I'm looking down at all the people, and I'm in this place about what's going to happen with my life. What am I going to do? I'm 49 years old. I've got all of this happening. Or 48 years old, I should say. All of this is happening. What am I going to do? And that's when I realized that I don't need to know. All I need to do is work at trusting and keep doing the work. And it will be resolved and brought forward for me. Okay? Easy to say, a lot harder to do. And I did, and guess what? It come out a way better than I thought. Who'd ever thought that I'd come out and get my old job back and say, who'd ever thought I'd be a mountain man tour guide? Who'd ever thought I'd be a professional Santa? Not me. And who ever thought I'd meet someone wonderful like Anna? Certainly not me with my track record. So what I'm trying to say here is it doesn't matter how bad it is. Faith and walking with the faith of God rather than in God will always carry you through. No matter what the circumstance or no matter what the situation is. It's just a matter of starting to believe in self. And you don't have to know how it's going to end. I don't know how it's going to end. I just know what the next step is. And I'll be sharing that again in the near future once it crystallizes a bit. So really, I want to leave you with this idea that faith does not mean trusting God to stop the storm. But trusting God to strengthen us as we walk through the storm. Because that's all we can do, folks. When it's there, we just got to step into it and get on with it. So let's go forward knowing that on this journey... There is a power, there is a presence, and there is a life inside of us that is greater than us, the part of us, that's there for us to guide us, lead us, and direct us. And it ain't going to be anybody else talking to you but yourself in here. So as we open up to receive that, I know that it brings us peace, prosperity, fulfillment, and happiness. Our divine birthright, I know it, I claim it, and so it is. So it is.